Rajya Sabha gets about 14 days to play with the bill and whatever uh, the Rajya Sabha says is not binding on the Lok Sabha. The Lok Sabha may listen to the amendments or the suggestions by the Rajya Sabha. The Lok Sabha may decide to completely ignore them. That's the first candy. And the second candy, a very, very interesting one, the second candy, um, very, very interesting one is uh, money bills have to be introduced by the prior recommendation of the president and in the election to the president, both the center and the states participate the elected members clear on this so that's the answer good 95 percent of you have gotten the answer correctly so it's a good thing well done well done good job good job very good yes uh, it's more about center and state yeah next question this is slightly difficult let's pay attention which of the following statements is correct in india the same person cannot be appointed as the governor for two or more states at the same time. The judges of the High Court of the states in India are appointed by the governor of the state, just as the judges of the Supreme Court are appointed by the president. No procedure has been laid down in the Constitution of India for the removal of a governor from his or her post. D. In the case of a union territory having a legislative setup, for example, like Delhi, Pondicherry, and now JNK, the chief minister is appointed by the lieutenant governor on the basis of majority support. Okay, let's try this answer. Go ahead. Just usually wait for four or five seconds, the poll usually shows up. Okay. Surprisingly, about 45% of you have gotten the answer wrong. So just uh, let's understand why or why not. Okay. This is again a simple application of rule number two. The center is stronger than the states. Now, please pay attention. I'm going to first teach you a few things and then we'll apply it to the concept here. Okay. Please don't type anything. Just see what we're talking about here in the larger context. Okay. Just hold on a second. So center stronger than the states. And we're going to be looking at it from the governor's point of view. Okay. So the first things that we have to understand is this. So this, the rule is very clear. All of you know that the center is always stronger than the states. And whenever the center is stronger than the states, the states have to be given a hollow candy. We've spoken about this in the previous question also. And this is one of our golden rules to study the constitution. Now, let's, let's apply this to governor. So the governor is appointed by the center and always works at the states. This means the center is stronger than the states. Now this means we must have some candy that we have to give the states. The candy that we give the states is that when the governor has to be appointed, the president shall speak to the chief minister of the state as to what he or she thinks who, be the, who, who the right choice would be. Correct? Yes. So in that case, the chief minister can recommend. Whatever the chief minister recommends is not binding, which is why it's a hollow candy. It really doesn't mean anything, which essentially means that the governor is, is, is an agent of the center, is somebody who's been sent by the center. The center is stronger than the states. Right. Now, if the center is stronger than the states, then let's apply this to the options that we have in front of you. Okay, let's uh, let's start. Okay, guys, just let me finish up. Uh, let me finish up. I'll play with everybody else. Just just hold on a second. Okay, right. One, the same person cannot be appointed as governor for two or more states at the same time. Why? Why not? Is the question. Whenever you see this, you have to understand why not. The governor is supposed to be a representative of the center at the level of the states, does not really play an active role in the policy making of the states, which means this governor is supposed to just inform the center about developments across the state. And a lot of times we have very, very small states or a big state, which is adjoined by a small state. So for administrative convenience, why not? 
clear on this? So that is why the same person cannot be appointed by. Uh, so if you, if you say that the same person cannot be appointed for more than two states is incorrect because ultimately it is the will of the center. The center looks at all states equally. So the first option becomes incorrect. Hmm? Come to the third option. In fact, I was expecting uh, some of you are. I would expecting some of you to you know uh, have a little bit of a question. Yes, Maharashtra, like Maharashtra and Goa. Okay, please put your question in the comment box, guys. It it breaks the flow of the class, and that's not appropriate. Okay, so no procedure has been laid down in the Constitution of India for the removal of the governor from his or her post. We know that the application of centre stronger than the states. The governor is appointed by the centre at all times and can be removed by the centre as and when it would be. If there was a procedure given, then it means we would have given a little bit of safety and a security to the office of the governor, and that would have sort of, uh, you know, disbalanced this kind of an equation. The centre sends the governor, and the centre removes the governor. We would have often heard of a very common name that says, um, uh, says, says a very common name that says that governor works at the pleasure of the president. Guys, uh, I know you guys know this. I just understand that a lot of people who are here were refreshing their concepts. Let me finish this up. Okay, I understand. With great knowledge comes great humility. So just hold on a second. Okay, let me finish up the points. We can take up the questions later on. Okay, all right, good. So the governor essentially becomes an agent of the centre and is appointed on the uh, 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 on the doctrine of pleasure, which means appointed uh, during the pleasure of the president. Which means that the president wants to and the president doesn't want to, the governor can or cannot contain. So when we say the president, it essentially means the president is working on the aid and advice of the council of ministers. So it's technically the centre who decides the future of the government. That's also why we do this. Okay, just by the way, one of the candies that we give is that the governor gets more discretionary powers. It's because um, the governor is going to never use the discretionary powers against the center. We've discussed this in the 2014 paper also. Lastly, in the case of a union territory having a legislative setup, the chief minister is appointed by the lieutenant governor on the basis of majority support. Now, this should have been a little confusing. In the case of a union territory having a legislative setup, a union territory having a legislative set setup is essentially so the third option automatically becomes incorrect. A union territory having a legislative setup is like any other state, right? You will have elections, you have a legislative assembly, you will have a majority in the legislative assembly and you will out of the majority, you will have to choose people who are going to lead the majority. They will be called the state council of ministers and the chief minister, excellent, the simple application of rule number one, democratic mandate, which essentially means, uh, which essentially means, uh, sorry, C is the correct answer, sorry, sorry. Yes. So, which essentially means, hold on a second. C is the correct answer. I was, I was talking about the first concept. Just don't worry. I'm coming to the answer. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay. So then, what happens is, guys, just, just hold on a second. Okay. Just hold on a second. Don't worry. So, when there's a union territory with a state legislative setup, it's like any other states. If it is like any other state, that means elections happen in any other state. Simple application of rule number one is democratic mandate. Now, when we say democratic mandate, it essentially means what? It means that if you have been elected, you have the power to take a higher democratic function. If your party has won an election in the state, then the party has the right to choose whoever the chief minister or the council of minister is going to be and who Whoever the party chooses on the basis of the majority that they won is the final word of the land. If somebody has won with a clear majority, neither the president, nor the governor, nor the lieutenant governor, nobody has any locus to deny that person the, the right to form government. So, when you say that this person is appointed by the lieutenant governor, it can't happen because it violates rule number one, as Aditya brilliantly said. So, the obvious answer becomes, so, so automatically, uh, D becomes uh, the incorrect uh, option. Now we are left with this. Now the judiciary of the High Court of the States of India and I are appointed by the governor, which essentially is this. What it is saying is, if 
Supreme Court judges are appointed by the president and the high court judges appointed by the governor. Now, you already know there is something called I square judiciary, which means independent and integrated judiciary, simple independent and integrated judiciary. Now, understand, you would always have remembered something called the collegium, which is a bunch of Supreme Court judges sitting together and recommending the names of other people who should become Supreme Court judges. And you would remember that these collegiums also recommend the names of Supreme Court as well as High Court judges. This is essentially creating independence and integrated judiciary. Now, you should counter question this. The counter question to this is, why does the judiciary, which is the self, which is the Supreme Court and the High Court, um, get appointed from a centralized process? Why do the states not play a role in the appointment of judges of the High Court? Okay, why do why do the judges of the states of the of the High Court of the states don't happen? The recruitment and the appointment doesn't happen at the level of the states. This is also another explanation of centers stronger than the states. We want the judiciary to essentially run from a centralized perspective. So that is why the judiciary self appoints itself. The judiciary also explains by saying that boss, I'm in Jagase, we will we'll appoint judges of the Supreme Court and High court from one place. The states play a role in the appointment of lower judges, which is why you have something called lower judicial exams. And lower judicial exams are largely about recruiting exams or recruiting at a state level. So Punjab judiciary, Rajasthan judiciary, MP judiciary, Delhi judiciary. And that also balances the idea that law and order is a state subject. Kudhi soch ke dekho. Jo lower judiciary hai, jo civil court, district court judges, jo ye log hai, these are the ones who are actually looking at core law and order questions the most and law and order is in the statist. So we are essentially doing it at a state level. But when we look at the Supreme Court and the High Court, these are essentially the larger element or, or the larger ecosystem of an independent and an integrated judiciary. So first option becomes wrong. Second option becomes wrong. The fourth option becomes wrong. The fourth option becomes wrong because if very simple again, I'll explain. Just guys, just give me a second. For very simple reasons, because if the chief minister, after, for example, for example, if a party has won an election in a state and they have swept the elections of the state, or if the party has, has swept the elections at the national level, then the party has the right to choose whoever they want to become the prime minister and the council of ministers. If we did not do this, if we did not allow for all of this, then what will be the point of winning in elections? then it would mean that the president and the governors would have a say in deciding who forms government when there is a clear majority. Here a clear majority. There is a clear basis of majority support, which means they have won the elections. Clear on this? So for a simple application of rule number one, democratic mandate, which Aditya brilliantly pointed out, which leaves me to this. If the center can... Yes. And if the center can appoint or remove the governor, then it is essentially a discretion of the center which is exercised through the president. If you had laid it down, if you had laid the procedure down, then the procedure would have given some amount of safety and security to the governor's office. And if it would have given some kind of safety and security to the governor's office, it would then not ensure that the centers are really stronger than the states. So that is why. Clear on this? Understood? So this is why option C becomes the right answer and the rest, oh, give me a minute, there are some very, very good questions which have been asked. Hold on a second, let me just go through some questions. A COVID-19 video end of the week. No, a minister from Rajya Sabha, uh, a minister from Rajya Sabha cannot vote on demand for grants and money. Uh, can you change the time of your course on governance? You can uh, watch the recorded classes once the timings are set, they are set. Okay? Just hold on a second. Zoof has a very good question. Joint committee on salaries and allowances was No. Too narrow. You will not get a question on this.
देवांश दिस इज ए पोलिटिकल क्वेश्चन दिस इज ए पोलिटिकल क्वेश्चन technically legally they have the same kind of problems so don't worry so have an email address you can ask them. yes situation is creation when there is no clear majority on the table okay hold on a second don't add more question so we uh is rajasthan can amend and take the money bill Yes, whatever the Rajya Sabha decides is up to the Lok Sabha, and the Rajya Sabha will decide. Mohit, no, there is no uh, uh, lieutenant. Lieutenant governor is equivalent in union territories, and governor is with states. That's the only difference. Yes, Garima, excellent. This is a center state Paris. Yes. Yes, Rahul. A state can have. So what you have is high court. How you have a bank and subsidiary branches. So headquarter of us SBI is let's say Delhi, and you have uh, multiple branches. So yes, in the same way also you can have multiple benches of the high court. So for example, UP the high court of UP is actually at Allahabad. There is a bench at Lucknow. So yeah. No. So if Delhi at the end of the day is a union territory with a legislative assembly, do you? You don't add more questions. Let me just go through these. Yes, can you amend or reject? Do you have the powers to? Yes, but you will not get such a loose-ended statement because this could mean that the Rajya Sabha can singularly do this, which is not the case. Okay. I'll be just hold on a second. These are good questions, and please don't uh, dictate the flow of the class. Yeah, just give me a minute. एक बार मैं देख लूँगा. There are some questions I won't get a chance to. These are good questions. Okay, just hold on a second. Just be patient. Even if democratic mandate is there, isn't that the CM must be won by someone? In case it should be the president, no. The CM exists at the state level, and the state level, the presidential counterpart is the governor. Political questions, yes, could be, could be not, doesn't matter. Okay, so next question, wait a minute. Done with this. ये हो गया था. We are now left with this. Okay. Consider the following statements. You know, the Chief Minister of Delhi is not appointed by the President. Okay. Uh, please post your question in the comment box, guys. Why don't we tell you this every day? Uh, consider the following statements: An amendment to the Constitution of India can be initiated by an introduction of a bill in the Lok Sabha only. If such an arrangement seeks to make changes to the federal character of the constitution, the amendment also requires to be ratified by the legislature of all states of, of all the states of India. Which of the following statements given above is or are correct? Take your time, and then you can answer the question. Don't answer in the box. कर दिया अब नेश I have changed the slide. Very good room. Sakshi, refresh your page. Very good, Vartika. 
good but again 45 percent of you have still gotten the question wrong always look at keywords an amendment to the constitution of india can be initiated by an introduction of a bill in the lok sabha only which means something could go wrong if an amendment seeks to make changes in the federal character of the constitution please don't write anything i'm going to explain something which will help you a lot uh, in the federal character of the constitution the amendment also requires to be ratified by the legislature of all the states of india okay of all the states of india okay now just see how this works uh we've done this table numerous times but i just want you to know this table if you have a pen and paper just just dot it down so you'll understand this okay just see how this works there are broadly two kinds of laws if you know this just be patient we'll revise this in the country the two kind of changes that happen changes that happen to the constitution and changes that don't affect the constitution clear changes that happen to the constitution and changes that don't affect the constitution and nothing to do with the constitutional change now there are two kinds of changes that happen to the constitution a serious change and a non serious change what is serious and what is non serious is clearly given under article 368 whatever is serious is mentioned under article 368 guys can you please not comment unless it is absolutely necessary okay whatever is 368 whatever is serious is not mentioned under article 368 or whatever is serious is mentioned under article 368 now if it is serious you have to look at two further questions does it affect the states does it not affect the states okay does it affect the states does it not affect the states if it affects the states you have to look at two further questions do you need to ask the states or do you not need to ask the states okay yeah. broadly speaking there are three major types of laws that don't affect the constitution an ordinary bill a money bill and a financial bill ordinary bill is something new money bill is something which requires money financial bill is something new which also requires money to be spent something new which also requires money to be spent okay now just see what i'm doing anything and everything which is outside article 368 any law which is made outside article 368 whether it's a change to the constitution or it is an ordinary money bill or a financial bill will always require simple majority okay which is 50 more than 50% of the people present and vote simple is this che kuch bhi ho jaye it's written in article 368 vishaka what is uh, under 368 and what is not so whatever is under 368 is in a constitutional amendment bill which is a serious type which is not is mentioned otherwise theek hai clear now if it does not affects you require special majority two thirds of present and voting in such a way it's more than half of the total strength of the house hmm? if it affects the state and then you have to ask or you don't have to ask if you don't have to ask it again requires special majority which is again both of them are the same two thirds of present and voting in such a way it's more than half of the total strength of the house so okay. if you have to ask the states then special majority plus state ratification state ratification means out of the total number of states in india at least half of the states will pass the same law through simple majority of the total number of states in india at least half of them will pass the same law through simple majority 
ठीक है दिस इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड स्पेशल मेजोरिटी इन स्टेट रेटिफिकेशन दिस ऑल्सो इज अ गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेंटर स्ट्रॉगर देन द स्टेट that here also the central houses require a tougher majority two thirds kind of thing whereas the states and only half of the states have to pass it through simple majority this is also an explanation of rule number 2 theek hai now what are your specific instances i will tell you okay post a question in the comment box tarun I'll answer it there. Anything which has a legislative assembly uh, will always be included. So Delhi, Pondicherry, and JNK are always included. Okay, if they have the powers to legislate on that matter. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to ask. You don't have to ask the states if what you are making a constitutional amendment on is in the concurrent list. If you're making constitutional amendment on something which is in the concurrent list, you don't have to ask. But if for everything else, you need to ask. Okay, so concurrent list में नहीं पूछने की जरूरत होती है, ठीक है? State में होगा तो state list में होगा तो पूछना पड़ेगा. If it is in the state list, or if it affects federalism deeply, you need to ask. ठीक है? This is the basic structure. Any and every law in this country is plotted on this table. You can never go wrong. Okay. So, for example, let us say Article Twenty One A, right to education. Hmm. Is it a law that affects the constitution? Yes. Does it change the constitution? Yes. Is education a serious change? Yes. Does it affect the states? Yes. Does do you need to ask the states? No, because education is in the concurrent list. Okay. So hypothetically, hypothetically, let us say tomorrow when some of you become one of you becomes the prime minister, you insert something called twenty one B. Which is right to health. It does not exist as of now. Let us say you exist. Let us say you make it exist. Okay. Will it change the constitution? Yes. Is it a, is it a serious change? Yes. Does it affect the con? Does it affect the constitution? Yes. Do you need to ask the states? Yes, because health is currently in the state list. So to make right to education, you only required special majority. But to make right to health, you will require special majority and state ratification. Clear on this? So this is how it works. Okay. Clear. The central law provision, the conclusion doesn't matter. You don't have to ask the states. Right. Explained simple enough. For example, non-serious. Non-serious would be territorial changes. Any change that you make to the country which does not require, which is not to do with cessation. कि आपने तेलंगाना बनाया या जैसे आपने for example land boundary agreement करा between India and Bangladesh, which is basically transfer of property. It's not a dis. It's 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 a transfer of property. It's not cessation. So is it a constitutional change? Yes. Does it is it serious or non-serious? Non-serious. So it is an amendment, but not an amendment under three sixty eight. And this was the hundredth constitutional amendment because we had to change schedule one, where the area of West Bengal had to be changed. ठीक है, clear on this. Yeah, changing the name of the state or any such thing. All right, okay. So. An amendment to the Constitution of India can be initiated by an introduction of the bill in the Lok Sabha. Why? The whole point is you have two houses. So, even and see the key word is has to be initiated. See the key word is initiated. Now you know, if there is an amendment to the Constitution, no matter what kind of an amendment it is to the Constitution. The Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha will have the same kind of voting power. Will have the same kind of voting majority, no matter what it is. If it is an amendment to the Constitution of the same kind, if it will have the same kind, what difference does it make where you initiate it? It makes no difference where you initiate it. If they have the same powers to vote, if they can be, they have the equal powers to vote. It doesn't matter where you initiate it. So the idea of whether it is to be initiated in the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha falls flat 
बिकॉज आफ्टर द लोक सभा इट हैज टू कम टू द राज्य सभा फ्रॉम द राज्य सभा इट हैज टू कम टू द लोक सभा क्लियर ऑन दिस सो इट डजेंट मैटर क्लियर सिंपल सेकेंड If an amendment seeks to make changes to the federal character of the constitution, the amendment will also require to be ratified by the legislature of all the states. Boss, if it will require the legislature of all the states, firstly, you will think: Is there a majority like that? Is there anywhere where all the states have to vote? Now think about it. If all the states, a very simple explanation: If all the states have to vote, then how is it fifty percent? Which means all the states have to pass. What we're talking about is hundred percent of the vote should be in your favor, and democracy always works fifty percent plus one. So simple, simple explanation, correct? Simple explanation. Clear. If you require it to be ratified by all the states, which means hundred percent of the states should be in your favor. What kind of a majority? What kind of a public mandate? What kind of a of a democratic setup is this? It is like saying you will only win an election if everybody in this country votes for you, right? That will never happen. Clear on this. So that's also the case. Simple enough. And if this was the case, even if all the states had to vote yes on this, what happens to our principle of centre stronger than the states? Where does it go? समझ में आया? Clear on this. So simple. ठीक है? Clear. Uh, transfer of something from the concurrent list to the state list. Serious affects. It's currently if if it is something if it for example is something transfer from the state list to the concurrent list. Serious does affect. You will have to ask because it is currently in the concurrent list. So will require special majority and state ratification. Okay, special majority and state ratification. Clear on this. Okay. The hollow candy is that the Rajya Sabha also gets to vote on the same counts as the Lok Sabha. Rajya Sabha is a representation of Rajya Sabha is a representation of the states. See, yeah? always remember this table. You will never go wrong. It's very simple, very easy to do. Changing name, but there are so many instances. It's a non-serious amendment. Please ask your questions. That this is not the place to ask questions. Anji, next. <clears throat> I'll come to the questions later on. Okay. Attorney General of India can take part in the proceedings of the Lok Sabha. Can be a member of the committee of the Lok Sabha. Can speak in the Lok Sabha. Can vote in the Lok Sabha. Which of the following is correct? Poll. Go ahead. अवधीश रिफ्रेश कर ले यार स्टेन जेल्स रे वेरी गुड अक्षत वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ऐश्वर्या एक्सेलेंट स्पॉटेड द राइट रूल वेरी गुड स्पॉटेड द राइट रूल गरिमा एक्सेलेंट एक्स समझ गया सीख गए रूल नंबर वन डेमोक्रेटिक मैंडेट If you don't have a mandate, you cannot perform a democratic function. Attorney General is an appointed body; it is not an elected body. And what is the core power? What is the core power? Core power that elected body have or elected individuals have? If you're elected, you can vote. Yes. So automatically, option four is wrong. So any option which is option four is wrong. Now see the rest. Okay, to take part in the proceedings of the Lok Sabha, to be a member of the committee of the Lok Sabha, to speak in the Lok Sabha. Yeah, think about this. Isn't option one and option three the same thing? When you are taking part in the proceedings, when you are taking part in the proceedings of the House, are you not speaking? Or what will you do? What else will you do in the Lok Sabha if you are not speaking? What if you can't dance in the Lok Sabha unlike most people do? Yes, they're essentially the same thing. अगर एक सही है तो तीसरा तो सही होगा ही होगा तो ऑटोमेटिकली ये आउट हो गया नाउ टू बी अ मेंबर ऑफ द कमिटी ऑफ द लोकसभा 
Now committees are uh, committees do not have any final recommendation value. ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है जो committee बोलती है वो होना ही होना चाहिए. Committees at the end of the day are still recommendatory in nature. So if a recommend if it is recommendatory in nature, it doesn't matter if you can have appointments because the committees also have the powers to call on experts to listen to people from various fields. So automatically it's a simple exercise. ठीक है तो even if you are a member of a committee of the lok sabha you are not seeing anything else clear on clear on this samajh mein aaya so 1 2 and 3 becomes correct 1 and 3 would have been the confusing part theek hai understood good very good see if you understand the rules you don't get this at the year this question had come i remember it is half the people and you got it wrong han ji next so this is you so something i also need to mention is 2013 uh, the paper was around the same time where there were discussions about you know removing the planning commission burying it and you know setting up the niti ayog so i i think the 2013 paper i spotted at least three to four questions on planning planning commission niti ayog all of those things so you see that a lot of these major developments usually get asked uh, a lot of times okay which of the following bodies do uh, do does not or do not find mention in the constitution ndc planning commission zonal councils ndc planning commission zonal councils okay take some time answer the question this is slightly outdated because planning commission nahi hai to main isko hata ke niti aayog bhi kar dun to bhi option sahi hai dipanch thanks for your information बट जोनल काउंसिल इज नॉट ए स्टैटरी बॉडी कौन सा जोनल काउंसिल एक्ट है भाई इट वॉज हंड्रेड अमेंडमेंट वॉज नॉट एन अमेंडमेंट अंडर थ्री सिक्सटी एट आउटसाइड थ्री सिक्सटी एट नो नॉट लेजिस्लेटिव काउंसिल सी लॉर्ड ऑफ यू गॉट द क्वेश्चन रॉन्ग ऐसे नहीं करना चाहिए चलो लेट सी Which of the following do or do not find mention the constitution? The planning commission or niti aayog. ये तो guarantee है कि नहीं हो सकता. मैं इसी से answer कर देता हूँ. I just no need to know anything else. और कुछ आता ना आता हो. ये definitely आता होगा. कि यार planning commission or niti aayog, which is the newer version of planning commission, are executive bodies. इतना तो आता ही. If nothing else, you would definitely know that the Planning Commission and Niti Aayog are executive bodies, which means they are not in the Constitution. Correct. So automatically to eliminate हो गया. To eliminate हो गया तो जहाँ जहाँ two हैं वो automatically eliminate हो गया. क्या बचा? ये बचना चाहिए था. According to elimination. Now I'm going to come to the right answer. Don't worry. I'm going to come to the right answer. Don't worry. Don't worry. ठीक है. तो जहाँ जहाँ two eliminate होना चाहिए था. मतलब समझ में आ रहा है कि Just pay attention. This means Niti Aayog or Planning Commission तो है ही नहीं. इसका मतलब जहाँ जहाँ two है, मतलब वो वो answer तो सही है, correct? इसका मतलब because of this one and three तो हट गया, C हट गया. Now National Development Council and Zonal Council. Hmm? Has any one of you ever heard of something called Interstate Council? ये सुना है Interstate Council सुना है. Interstate Council सुना है. इंटरस्टेट काउंसिल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में है है गुड ठीक है एक्सेप्ट गुड गुड सो टिल नाउ वी बीन एबल टू एलिमिनेट वन एंड थ्री ठीक है वन एंड थ्री तो हमने एलिमिनेट कर दिया है नाउ वी आर ओनली लेफ्ट विथ फिगरिंग आउट वेदर द नेशनल डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल and zonal councils are a part of this now think about it just understand something note is something very interesting national development council is about development bahut dhyan se dekhna is about i'm going to give a very beautiful trick is about development development and welfare are related apply rule number 1 I cannot under any circumstance compulsorize development on welfare or development and welfare. 
because it would take the democratic mandate of the government away this would excellent rahul this would essentially mean like something like dpsp theek hai to main dpsp nahi kar deta because dpsp essentially talks about development only at the end of the day so there is no way you would have a constitutional body which is recommendatory in nature and the development and uh, 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 does not perform an actual function and the development part cannot be uh, a compulsory function in the constitution because it takes away the democratic mandate away <coughs> so automatically development council be nahi ho sakta can't be in the constitution correct so development council be nahi ho sakta clear on this which means planning commission to ho hi nahi sakta theek hai aur मतलब प्लानिंग कमीशन तो हो ही नहीं सकता और डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल भी नहीं हो सकता है तो सेकंड ऑप्शन भी गलत हो गया ना वी आर लेफ्ट विद वन एंड टू एंड वन टू एंड थ्री क्लियर ऑन दिस वन एंड टू एंड वन टू एंड थ्री एक्सीडेंट आदित्य क्लियर ऑन दिस डेवलपमेंट इज अनदर वर्ड फॉर वेलफेयर you cannot compulsorize welfare in the constitution because it would take over the democratic mandate it's like the same thing as saying as the directive uh, principles uh, are to be compulsory they can never be compulsory so the development part is also out because we can see the word development to to be hat gaya one and three be hat gaya ab hamare paas we only have to figure out zonal councils we have to figure out zonal councils theek hai now understand this simple explanation don't worry simple explanation you have to now figure out do zonal councils get to be in the constitution or not because the confusion would be the confusion would be zonal councils and inter state councils theek hai inter state councils zonal councils and interstate councils theek hai somebody is uh, letting me know that there is a tech problem here is there a tech problem are you not able to hear everybody can hear right yes good okay okay fine 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 no problem no problem ठीक है अब देखो याद नहीं आ रहा है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू अब देखो याद नहीं आ रहा है वी आर नॉट एबल टू एक्यूरेटली रिमेम्बर विच ऑफ दिस इज राइट विच ऑफ दिस इज रॉन्ग हो सकता है नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल थिंक ऑफ द वर्ड्स यू वुड डेफिनेटली हर्ड समथिंग ऑल इंटर स्टेट ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स सुना ना इंटर स्टेट ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स इन इन सम फॉर्म और अनादर इन इन वन वे और अनादर हर्ड ऑफ दिस यस so uh, a simple word association would be if interstate trade and commerce is a part of the constitution and the constitution talks about interstate per se relations relations between the states figuring out relations that affect one impact of an action into the other part the interstate councils bhi ho hi sakta hai zonal would mean dividing the country into zones and representing different uh, states through a zonal uh, organization or for example let us say having inter um, regional cooperation inter state council or inter state trade and commerce seems related not necessarily zonal agar hota bhi agar hota bhi let us assume agar zonal council would have been in the constitution why would you have two organizations in the constitution talking about the same thing if inter state councils are definitely in the constitution why would you require zonal councils which would seem like doing the same thing in the constitution why would the constitution give you two bodies performing similar kind of functions and we know that inter state councils are definitely going to be in it because we are able to associate it with inter state trade and commerce to so zonal council aap eliminate kar sakte ho मतलब ना डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल है ना प्लानिंग कमीशन है ना जोनल काउंसिल है एक टिप आई विल डेफिनेटली गिव यू व्हेन यू गेट नेगेटिव क्वेश्चंस व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डू नॉट ऑलवेज मेक अ बिग सर्कल ऑन द नेगेटिव क्वेश्चंस बिकॉज इन द हरी यू ऑफन फॉरगेट दैट देयर इज अ नॉट एंड यू मार्क द आंसर नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट द ये हमेशा ध्यान रखना व्हेनेवर यू सी अ नॉट 
always circle mark nobody cares in the examination room nobody is going to come and check but always keep a check okay okay next the parliament can make any law for the whole or any part of the country for implementing international treaties i'll explain there's a little bit of teaching also to be done here with the consent of all the states with the consent of the majority of the states with the consent of the states concerned without the consent of any state theek hai wow rahul you are a poet and you don't even know it well done okay shoot the poll is live One point two seconds. Oh. Okay, I need to teach you some background concepts regarding this. It's slightly important. Hmm? The background concepts to these are: you understand that there are a bunch of international organizations. Hmm? The international organizations are like an international parliament. Where in India you have MPs, in international organizations you have countries. Countries are MPs in the international organization. Hmm? If the Parliament of India makes a law, the international organization would also want to make a law. The only problem is international organizations cannot really make a proper law because the sovereignty of the country cannot be compromised. You cannot make anything which is binding on the country without asking the country. Hmm? But what do they largely do? They sit and make documents. so for example let us say you have the un general assembly summit and when you have the un uh, general assembly summit all countries of the world are sitting here and let us say they are discussing thinking of having uh, anti terrorism laws and one of the things that they want to do is define terrorism in that document on how to you know handle it how to treat people who have been caught in terrorist acts and things like that Hmm? Correct. Now you can't force this onto countries. You can't. The country has to ask. Always remember: yes means yes, and no means no. Very important in life. No means no. Consent is king. So the principle of consent is king applies here. So a country has, if a country wants to say yes, the country will say yes in two ways. Okay. one it will become it will either ratify the document or it will become a signatory to the document both of these are ways of saying yes if they don't want to then they can say no they can abstain also theek hai the difference is when a country says it is going to be a signatory this is like saying great question but your question hurt me i am not going to answer your question one of those things signatory essentially means no legal obligation i agree with you i understand what you are saying tum sangharsh karo hum tumhare sath hai you put in all the efforts you have to you do everything that you have to you keep continuing it hum nahi karenge clear on this that is called signatory but if a country ratifies an international document it says i agree i am going to go home i am going to go back to my country i am going to make a law i am going to make an institution i am going to make changes to implement what this document wants me to do this is called ratification clear on this ratification theek hai pakka simple enough this means i have a very simple question for you foreign policy is in union list state list or concurrent list 
यूनियन लिस्ट यूनियन लिस्ट स्टेट में तो नहीं होता ना मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फॉरेन अफेयर्स कि बिहार और बांग्लादेश रिलेशनशिप संभाल रहे हैं ऐसे तो नहीं होता ना फॉरेन पॉलिसीज इन द यूनियन लिस्ट ये सब जो हो रहा है हमारे पास फॉरेन मिनिस्टर है फॉरेन सेक्रेटरी है हमारे पास ऐसे स्टेट पर थोड़ा है फॉरेन मिनिस्टर दिस मीन दिस इज हैपनिंग एट द लेवल ऑफ द सेंटर करेक्ट सिंपल इनफ सो द सेंटर हैज द पावर्स टू डू दिस बॉस इफ दिस इफ द समथिंग इज इन द यूनियन लिस्ट एंड द सेंटर हैज टू इंप्लीमेंट अ डॉक्यूमेंट बाय मेकिंग अ लॉ और अ स्कीम और एन इंस्टीट्यूशन और व्हाट एवर एंड इट इज इन द यूनियन लिस्ट एंड इंप्लीमेंटिंग इट बिकॉज़ ऑफ एन इंटरनेशनल ऑब्लिगेशन does the center need to ask the states on something which is in the union list does the states need to ask the st- does the center to ask the states on anything no okay consent 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 not required without the consent of the states samajh mein aaya ek to consent of all the states violates the principle of democracy with the consent of the majority of the states applies on state ratification which only applies to constitutional amendments with the consent of the states concerned to aise kaun se international document hai itna kya un bed ke soch rahi hai that we are going to make a law which will affect bihar chatisgarh and up only aisa bhi nahi hoga so out theek hai clear on this good simple nice and easy good to understand i'll give you a few examples so that you'll understand whether this actually happens uh okay uh so yeah, one sec let's take the example of let us say a law why are you mai bata raha hu mai bata don't worry i'll tell you tell don't worry you would have heard of something called uh, बेटा इंट ऑन सेकंड एक्स अरे रे 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 बस 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 डोंट वरी डोंट वरी डोंट वरी ओके लेट अस यू वुड हैव हर्ड ऑफ समथिंग कॉल्ड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट रिसेंटली वी हैव मेड सम चेंजेस इन द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एक्ट द चेंजेस दैट वी हैव मेड नाउ इज दैट फॉर एग्जांपल कंपनीज कैन आल्सो बी कन्विक्टेड फॉर करप्शन यू विल रिक्वायर प्रीवियस सैंक्शंस फ्रॉम फ्रॉम अ सीनियर ऑफिसर इवन टू प्रोसिक्यूट रिटायर्ड सर्वेंट्स रिटायर्ड सिविल सर्वेंट्स you should have a specialized court and you should have a time driven trial for corruption cases ye sab kyun hua ye sab ye ye humne laws kyun laaye because there was an international document called the un convention on corruption which india had ratified and india said yes we want to come back home and make these changes in our laws similarly we had the rio declaration giving an institutions example we had a rio declaration and in the rio declaration what we had done was in the rio declaration what we had done was um the declaration said that we should that that, that all countries who are agreeing with this should have a dedicated environmental redressal agency a dedicated environmental redressal agency india ratified the rio declaration came back home and in a few in a few years set up the national green tribunal theek hai yes arbitration act also yes in fact the right to education act is also because india has ratified to the un convention on the rights of uh, child 1991 wo convention mein likha hai children have a right to sleep wo india ne kaha hum nahi implement karenge because if we give children the right to sleep in our country there goes the future of our country samajh mein aaya clear on this so you learned a couple of key concepts also today theek hai now let me go through a couple of uh, Uh, let me go through a couple of questions uh, there are about five six questions which are left which will pick up day after tomorrow also because 2012 paper has very few politic questions so half of 2013 and half of 2012 theek hai clear ruk ja ruk ja ruk ja ruk ja ruk ja hmm mm-hmm. well Where, where, where? Okay. हाँ तरुण भी आंसर्ड राहुल एज ए गुड क्वेश्चन देखो क्वेश्चन कितना अच्छा है इज स्टेट रेटिफिकेशन अगेंस्ट अगेन ए सिंपल मेजोरिटी वोटिंग प्रोसीजर यस बिकॉज ऑफ सेंटर स्ट्रॉगर देन द स्टेट ठीक है This 
दिस इज अक्षय फॉर्मैलिटी द गवर्नर ओनली गेट्स अ डिस्क्रेशन इफ देर इज नो क्लियर मेजोरिटी बेटा इसलिए आयुष हैज अ ब्रिलियंट क्वेश्चन यार आधार वॉज न्यू नहीं आधार वॉज नॉट अ न्यू इट वॉज चेंजिंग अ बिल बट ये आधार को जो मनी बिल किया था ये पोलिटिकल क्वेश्चन है क्लियर ऑन दिस द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑल्सो सेट नहीं नहीं ठीक है नहीं करना चाहिए था बट किया है ठीक है ओके तरुण वॉट इज योर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आई आंसर डर क्वेश्चन यार With our Article 368 will include states with respect union territories with state legislatures. I answered this before also. Union territories with state legislatures are also include included when we talk about state ratification. Anjali, we require initiation because when you are making a law on something on the state list, you are taking away what belongs to the states. Application of centre stronger than the states. The Rajya Sabha initiation is a hollow candy. It is a hollow candy because ultimately the law has to be passed by both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha in the same manner. Okay, what is not a serious constitutional amendment to Shant is whatever is not inside 368, but has to change the constitution. Or affects Rohan, or affects federalism also. ये ये गणेश का सवाल है रुक जाओ रुक जाओ ये In constitutional amendment of federal structure, no, 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 not at all. Ganesh. Yes, yes, that's exactly what happened. Education was moved from the state to the concurrent list in the Forty Second Amendment, nineteen seventy-six. Yeah, Divya, wrong, wrong, very wrong. MCI into NMC is nothing to do with the constitution. It is a law outside the constitution required simple majority. Trick question, Divya, has got it up. There is a trick actually. Uh, anything which has a grassroots implementation element to it will usually be in the state and the concurrent list. Yeah, devolution. Okay. जे एन के में अमेंडमेंट कहा हुआ है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट कहा हुआ है जेर के रिओर्गेनाइजेशन बिल आया है भाई ये पंकज इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन इफ द लॉकडाउन ओपन अप विच सीम्स वेरी अनलाइकली एजुकेशन सीम्स टू बी थैंक यू मेगा थैंक यू वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड uh yeah so pankaj uh, even if the class is so firstly education should be the last priority to open up especially populated classrooms such as ours in majiram it is a superb health risk it is a health disaster waiting to happen if you know people are there so chances are very unlikely okay <laughs> thank you mega really sweet of you um ha but they are yes because we did not include karima we don't include the water part, part in the land boundary agreement pratik a pratik what if a country is ratified international document does not comply very good question प्रतीक एज मच इज योर पेरेंट्स एज फॉर एग्जाम्पल एज मच इज अ पेरेंट माइट हेट अ चाइल्ड द पेरेंट विल ऑलवेज लव अ चाइल्ड नथिंग मच दैट यू कैन डू सेम हेयर ज्यादा कुछ नहीं कर सकते सैंक्शन थोड़ा डांट दिया थोड़ा ऐसे स्पीचेस दे दिए थोड़ा बोला यस आई डोंट लाइक यू ये सब कर सकते हैं बट कैन यू वेज वॉर अगेंस्ट अ कंट्री बिकॉज उन्होंने एनजीटी नहीं बनाया द प्रॉब्लम विद इंटरनेशनल लॉ इज दैट इज नथिंग कॉल्ड इंटरनेशनल लॉ नो नो इंटरनेशनल चीटी रिक्वायर्ड Yes, essential reading that I have given is more than enough for prelims 2020. I have shortlisted Lakshmi Kanth into 70 pages, chapter by chapter, page by page. Okay. 
so the time limit depends on document to document political questions balyan balyan are not asked okay bas bas aur sawal nahi bas 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 assam has been given special status tista water agreement was not a land boundary agreement because the abhas because gst affects the states that is why gst is a constitutional amendment under 368 also affects the states tabhi to itna time lag gaya agar gst mein states ratification nahi chahiye hota to kab ka kar diya hota nothing nothing lakshmikan the newspaper is more than enough acha i wanted to ask you guys this hai ki thoda sa mujhe aapse puchna tha a lot of you have been asking polity governance mein padhe kya kya nahi padhe bahut matlab drama hai ki lakshmikan padhna hai ki bt bas padhna hai ki kurukshetra padhna hai ki yojana padhna hai ye sab mein doubt hai kya you guys have a doubt isse samajh mein nahi aa raha hai ki kya padhe kya nahi padhe theek hai kisi ko agar doubt bout hai isme theek hai to fair no aapko nahi hai theek hai already in case you have a problem with figuring out resources and stuff i'll make a youtube video on this theek hai i'll mess up clear karunga kitna padho itna nahi padha and i'm very and i'm very cutthroat with my sources do source padho acche se padho bahut hai theek hai okay done i'll make a i'll make a youtube video and i'll post it on the telegram channel also uh naam pata telegram group aur khana khane ke liye request ओके हाँ बेटा सब 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 सो इफ यू इफ यू हैव फ्रेंड्स हु वांट टू जॉइन प्लीज आज दैट टू जॉइन यूजिंग दिस कोड फिर वो खाना मिलेगा ये लोग मेरे को फ्री वीडियो करने देंगे तो अच्छा रहेगा ठीक है हंड्रेड दस 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 सत्तर डिस्काउंट नहीं प्लीज सेंड इन योर क्वेश्चन हाँ सब मैं देखता हूँ ठीक है Thank you guys. Thank you. Take care. See you guys day after tomorrow at twelve thirty. We'll finish the remainder of the twenty thirteen question. Then move to twenty twelve also. Day after tomorrow at twelve thirty. Hmm. Aaj kya hai? Aaj Tuesday hai. Then Tuesday na niya Wednesday. Friday. So Friday twelve thirty p.m. Sir, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Take care. Take care. See you guys. Thank you, Mega. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye. Take care. See you guys. Bye.